today. That would be awesome. Um, it is definitely something that you want to, to make sure that you have a plan for, right? And that's what I really wanted to do with this webinar is we had a lot of members asking, what are some of the steps? Not, not only, hey, I, I'm transitioned to live trading, what do I do now? Or what are some of the unexpected things that I, I'm going to encounter? So I'm going to cover a couple of those. But I really wanted to cover an aspect that I personally believe should be your metric for determining when it's right to go live. Uh, either full-time or to the point that you're like, yes, I'm all in and I'm ready for uh, live trading. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about, about today. So um, before we get started, or uh, yep, before we get started, a uh, disclaimer. As always, uh, you know, Bear Bowl Traders, we're not any type of investment advisory service or broker dealer. No content that we publish is going to make a recommendation to trade any particular security portfolio transaction or any particular investment. All that we are doing is sharing with you our experiences in hopes that it will improve your trading or prevent you from making the same mistakes that we have made through our trading career. Um, so, that that is our uh, disclaimer. So this is what I want to cover today, right? Uh, when to transition to live trading, and I put review. And the reason I put a review here, so I'm just going to quickly, in about five to ten minutes, touch very quickly on the class or recording that we have in the BBT Essentials uh, course on when to transition to live trading. I I think uh, that recording will give you a good understanding of the fundamental reasons why I believe the way I believe. But in case you haven't watched that, I just want to quickly touch on why the pillars are so important to your trading. Then we'll talk about broker considerations, uh, whether you go with interactive brokers or whether you go with Capital Markets Elite Group. Those are the two that I'm going to focus on. If you choose to go with another broker, um, you can apply the same basic concepts that I'm going to talk about here. You just have to contact your broker and identify what those uh, specific things may be. Uh, then we're going to do a quick uh, review of the trader's business plan and trade book and why I think those two things are vital to have in place before you make that transition to live trading. And we're going to really dive deep into the psychology the first few weeks. Or, as the case will turn out, when you try to increase risk. Because when you increase risk, you're going to revert back to a lot of these same scenarios with your stress and anxiety and, and the emotions that you're feeling when you, you venture into uncertainty. So that's something that we can all, all kind of go through. And then we're going to talk about, very briefly, some considerations for returning to simulator and what I think uh, is a great metric to determine that. Uh, I, can, I think uh, you, if you're honest with yourself, can look at this metric and very quickly make the correct assessment of yes or no of whether you should be trading in a live account or whether you should return to the simulator if you've been trading in live. And then we'll open it up to question and answers. I'll answer any question you got, not only over this presentation, but we'll stop the recording. You can ask me anything that you want. Um, uh, ask me anything, right? An AMA. I'll, I'll open up to anybody that wants to ask. So first off, I, I do want to say thank you for attending. All of you that are attending here, uh, are you can tell... Uh, are serious about your trading, right? Because this is this topic of everything can be very yeah or like what's the what's the point of this class? I know why I want to go to trade live, and why do I need to attend a class that's gonna 
uh, tell me when I should make a, make that decision or, or return to live trading. And, and I honestly believe if you're treating this as a business and serious about wanting to make this a career, this is a good class or webinar for you to, to consider before making a major financial decision in your life. Because it can be. I, I can count the number of traders that have, have probably blown up their account in the sums of 17, 20, $25,000. And, and for some people that might not be in much, but for others, it could be a life savings or definitely impact relationships in their, in their families. So it's important that you take the, the proper uh, steps when we go into here. So before we get started, in, in Peter fashion, I'm gonna give you a poll. You may not have been anticipating this. I got two of them for you, but to get an assessment of where we are, I wanted to send this out to everybody. So that way you can see it. Are you trading in a live or simulator account? Uh, just want you to, to pick who it is. That way you know uh, what's going on so we can kind of get an assessment of everybody. Doesn't take much uh, deep thought. It also lets us know how many people have just started up and, and left their computers as well. <laughs> just kidding. I don't know who who's responding. I just get total number of responses. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, live account includes sim. So if you're doing both live and real trading, you can you can uh, select that live and real. So we're gonna close it out here in five, four, three, two, one. So as you can see here, um, let me move my camera here for a sec. I uh, we're about a third. It looks about third. About 42% in simulator, 32% live, and then and 26%. Uh, so we're we're broken down in into roughly thirds, a little bit more in the simulator account. So we'll we'll kind of direct it towards that. Um, if you notice down in the lower right hand corner is an HTTP uh, web address. If you copy that, that's going to take you to the actual class uh, recording on when to transition to live trading review um, and you can watch it for in-depth. All I'm going to do here is touch very briefly on some points that are important but I think all of us need to know this before moving on into the class uh, so that we can uh, all be on the same page. I like that snow round and around we go in simulator. <laughs> So, I think the first thing that you have to determine when you're in a SIM account is what metric are you going to use or should you use to determine when to make that jump from trading paper money to trading your livelihood, right? I mean, let's be honest. Money affects everything we do. Money, food costs money, our house costs money, uh, presents for our kids cost money. Uh, red compression pants for soccer cost money. Um, so it's important to know what metrics <laughs> you should use. Yes, I know a little inside joke if you weren't there. If you can find them, correct, John? Uh, if you weren't here for the closed show, I spent about three hours traveling around Los Angeles area trying to find some red compression pants this afternoon for my daughter as she busted in this morning at 7.30 with a dire emergency of what was going on. <laughs> so, but you wanna make sure what those metrics are, right? Uh, common things that are out there and you'll hear different moderators talk about, you also hear different traders talk about. Consecutive green days, right? How many do you want? Do you want an entire month of green days? Do you want an entire, uh, week of green days, uh, it, that is up to you. I would caution you, I use this initially, uh, but what is a green day? 
you can have all these green days here, right? Uh, what is it? Let's say we got, I can, 5, 10, 16, 17 green days, one break even day, and three red days. Well, those 17 green days, right? Could all be a dollar to ten dollars while these two red days or these three red days are negative two thousand <laughs> right so it maybe consecutive green days isn't isn't the metric you want to go with so instead you go with the dollar metric right or the r metric you want to make 40 r a month or you want to make 250 dollars a month uh, whatever that case may be, that metric you want to make to prove to yourself that you can make what you want in a live account. That could also be a metric that you use. Maybe it's winning percentage. Um, I will caution you that you can have a high winning percentage and still be red. <laughs> Just letting you know. I've, I've proven that myself, to myself. <laughs> you can have a high winning percentage and still be red. So be cautious with that one. Uh, Non-monetary. Uh, this is actually the metric that I used, not saying it was the correct one. And if you ask me um, um, today if I would use this metric again, I would say no, I wouldn't use that metric per se, but it would absolutely be a part of the metric that I do recommend. But stopping out is very important. If the one thing you learn in a simulator is learn how to stop out and, and not average down or average into a losing trade. It'll save you a lot of money in the thing. And then the other one that I want to kind of put out to you is a measurement of confidence, right? Uh, you can do this through strategy sets, uh, your risk management, or your trade management, right? Do you have confidence in your risk management? Do you have confidence in your trade management? Do you have confidence in your strategy itself? And most importantly, do you have the confidence in yourself? All these are different metrics that you can use. And I am sure everybody that's in here can look at this list most likely and pick one of these that you used when you were in a simulator account, right? That was um the metric that you made to determine or currently have said this is the metric i'm going to use to make that transition to live trading for me after everything that that i've gone through in my two and a half years of trading i would say the metric that you should most likely use because it incorporates all this stuff on the chart is when you have 100% confidence in your trade book edge. And what do I mean by your trade book edge? Remember, if you've watched the videos, that trade book edge is, the, is all three pillars combining all that together to produce a strategy that is profitable, right? It's you executing it. It's taking this technology pillar, you know in your platform, You've identified whether you need scanners. You've identified the broker that you want to use because it benefits your strategy, right? If you're more of a swing trader, you probably want to go with somebody with free commissions versus an active trader that wants good execution speed, right? You know how you want your desk set up, whether you want two monitors, six monitors, how many monitors do you need, your keyboards, all that. You picked a community. You know what you want. That's that technology aspect. Then, this is where I would say 99% of new traders spend their time in strategy, or spend their time in sim, is developing aspects of their strategy, right? Because we view it and we're like, we need a strategy, I need to know that this works and this is how I make money. It is that tangible, physical thing that we can look at that makes sense to us. If I do A, then B will happen most likely and I'll get the rewards that I want. So it's very tangible. But within that strategy, you need to know what your trading beliefs are, what your trading rules are. Not, not just, 
I'm not talking about know that you can regurgitate them, but believing in your trading rules, that those trading rules protect you from yourself. Knowing what you're looking for as far as a setup. How do you select your stocks in play? What stocks are you looking for? And most importantly, hands down, your belief in your strategy. You have to know when you want to trade it. You have to know when you're what your indicators are, the confirmations, where you want to take an entry, where your stop loss, how you're going to manage your risk, and how you're going to manage the trade. That should be second nature. You should not be having to take a second thought to it. It is just habit, you know it, so you execute it. Because when you make that transition to live trading, you are going to have emotions. Maybe not the first day, maybe not the second day, Maybe not the third day, but eventually when you are trading, you are going to run into yourself and yourself trying to sabotage you. And you're going to have to fight through that. And the last thing you want to be worrying about when you're frustrated and angry is having to determine whether it's the right indicator or the right confirmation or is this my entry point, right? The when, the where that uh, Thor talks about. You don't want to be thinking about that. You want to be thinking about having that internal argument with yourself of why this strategy works, even though your mind's telling you that it does not work. So you've got to have the belief in there. The technology and the strategy are very important when you're in sin. Na nail them down. Then you have this psychology pillar. I'm here to tell you, you may think you have pressure when you're in sim. You're like, I treat this live. I get angry. I get frustrated. I have emotions when it doesn't work. I had it when I was in sim. It's only going to get magnified when you start to trade your live money or your actual money. The pressure you have on in sim right now is because you haven't experienced the pressure in a live account. For all of those that are in a live account, or trading live in simulator, I'm sure you can attest to when you went back to sim, it was a totally different experience in sim. It became a much more of a video game for you because the emotions weren't necessarily as high because you weren't putting as much pressure on yourself because you met a metric that you set for yourself to make that transition to live. If you never made that transition, it's that pressure to make that metric right, to transition to live that applies emotional pressure to you. So you experience some of that. The things I would recommend that you work on in your psychology while you're on in, while you're in sim. Take Dr. Reed's trader personality assessment, figure out what, what personality you are, and then try to figure out your trading style. Identify five things that will make you a better trader through Creta's performance uh, profile. Then start working on those while you're in sim because when you make that transition to live, you want to still, still continue. And most importantly, I, I truly believe this, develop some smart goals for trading in your life, both process, performance, and outcome. These goals are going to help you survive that initial shock of emotional trading, of losses, of decreases, of having to battle through um, yourself, right? Um, because when you think, when you've been punched in the gut, when you've fallen down, you feel like you're in the mud and you just can't get up anymore, you can always go back to what goals you set out and go, wow, look, I really have come so far. Um, Snow, uh, yes, I can get it. If somebody, if one of the moderators, if you could pull that link uh, and post it up there. If you can't find it, up, I'll get it. It should be um, intro to trading personality uh, webinar that's in there. Um, you're able to go back and you're able to look and say, this is how far I've come. And it will really, really help you uh, go through it. And then it all kind of comes down to this trade book at the end, right? This is the metric 
that I honestly believe you should look at to build the confidence in yourself. And that is your equity curve in a SIM account, which is fine. As we look at this equity curve right here, this, if I looked at it, tells me that you have 100% confidence in your trade book edge because you are executing on all cylinders. You have a positive sloping equity curve. You can see, sure, there's some drawdowns that are gonna happen, right? There's some drawdowns here, but for the most part, right? For the most part, it's in a positive sloping upward direction, meaning that you are doing things over and over well. That's where you're gonna get the confidence. And it's very important that you have this confidence in this, in this strategy, because when you transition to live, it allows you to focus on what's gonna be the real issue. And that's yourself. It allows you to open the door because what's gonna happen is when you go live, this is what your equity curve is going to turn into. Chaos, <laughs> right? You're going to get chaos in the beginning. You're going to get this natural sloping down where everything's going wrong. What are you going to do in here? Your mind, right, is going to want to blame the strategy. But the only thing that has changed from sim to live is you've now introduced emotion. And as long as you have this 100% confidence in your strategy, you can tell your mind that no, sorry, <laughs> I, I know my strategy works. What is it about me that is causing my equity curve to be crazy like this, right? If you notice, this is a downward sloping. But then, even though this is still crazy all over, much up and down compared to this, it's still a positive sloping. Sure, there was bigger drawdowns, there was bigger emotions that are going through, but it still shows you that the, the strategy works. In full disclosure, these two equity curves are mine. This is the last 40 SIM trades that I took when I was testing the break of high of day strategy back uh, June of last year, just break of high of day, 40, 40 straight trades that I did. And these are the first 40 live trades that I did, trading the exact same. Even after two years, knowing that I would have emotions, knowing what those emotions are, it still affects your, your equity curve because you're dealing with yourself and you're dealing with real issues. That's why it's important to be able, because during this point, I will tell you, during this point right here, let me pull up this circle, I can tell you that mine was, my mind was telling me to drop this strategy and go back to doing what I was doing before because that was working. But I said, no, that's not what I want. This is working. I know it works. I've proven it works. Let me figure out what it is about me that causes it. So there is the review that we had on it, okay? If you take anything, the metric that I would use and I recommend is your equity curve. Use that as a metric. If you can produce a positive sloping equity curve in SIM, you're going to have some issues when you transition to live. It's going to go up and down, but you're going to have the confidence to do it. So when you make that transition, right? When you make that transition, there's some things that you have to consider with, with regards to your broker, okay? One is First and foremost, especially for U.S. residents, you need to determine whether you have the minimum $25,000 um, plus capital to trade or not. If you're outside the U.S., uh, depending on the country you're in and what brokers you have access to, your minimum capital requirements are going to vary. This one I'm going to, for 
interactive brokers. Uh, if you're a U.S. resident, you need 25,000, and I know Canada's a different amount, and so is uh, different other countries. So you'll just have to check with them as I don't know what those are. But this is the application process, and you need to plan this into your decision to trade live because you can't just say, hey, Monday I'm gonna trade live and expect your broker account to be open, funded, and ready to go. It's just not going to, to happen. Um, you gotta fill out your application online. You're gonna choose light or pro. Light is the free commissions, pros is for the active trader that we typically recommend. Uh, plan at least a week. Uh, one, it may take you a couple days to get the documents that they require, but it's also gonna take interactive brokers a few days, 48 to 72 hours to approve your application, or they may send questions back to you to ask if there is anything else. Um, it's the data use, Matt, and the execute. Oh, Matt's got it. Uh, or Matt, yeah, the limitation between light and pro is your executions and your fills. That is the, the biggest difference. Um, think of light as more of your free uh, platform or, or broker that's competing with Robinhood. Uh, they're gonna, gonna get those commissions in other ways where pro, you, you have the ability to have direct access to the market. Once it gets approved, you wanna choose your trading platform. Uh, IB um, has Trader Workstation, and, or you can go with Das Trader Pro. If you choose Das Trader Pro, go to this link. You can also find it by simply going over to the member bar in the website and clicking on it. You'll get a special uh, Das package. Uh, it gives you the ARCA book. It gives you uh, some additional data and uh, for free that you don't have to pay for. But in order to do that, you first have to have an approved account. And this website or this link will take you step by step through it. It's not difficult. You just fill it out, fill out some forms and send it. Usually it takes about 24 uh, to 48 hours to get set up. So again, plan that in. This part is important if you're IB. Once you have your account set up, you have your trading platform, before you start to take a trade, you need to go in and select the commission structure that you want. IB has tiered, fixed, and free. Free is for uh, light programs. If you want to use Dash Trader Pro, you're limited to tier and fixed. Um, Tiered is going to be the best if you are trading small size. If you're trading a uh, larger size, uh, fix is the way to go. But if you're just transitioning, we highly recommend you stay uh, small and you use the tiered structure. Then uh, fund your account, either wire, bank, or check. Um, if you're doing the bank ACA, which is basically a direct transaction between them, you need to you're gonna to have to pay attention to what, how much your bank will let you transfer in a week. Uh, for me, I think I did five transactions of $5,000 over a week and a half time frame to get to the limit that I needed. And then the last thing you wanna consider for Dash Trader Pro routing is you wanna make sure that your orders are, are uh, have the right routing for IB, you need to have Smart L or Smart M for trading. Otherwise, uh, um, uh, the orders may not go through. So that is for IB. For Capital Markets Elite Group, they, they do not have PDT. So if you're a U.S. resident and do not have uh, that amount of money, you can go with Capital Markets Elite Group. Canadians, you cannot use this. They do not allow you. Uh, you instead, you're going to use Interactive Brokers Canada. If you're under twenty-five thousand, um, I'm not sure what the minimum requirement of capital in there is, but I I don't think it's very large. It's just that your margin rate will vary depending on the amount of cash that you have in that account. 
Application process is very similar. You're gonna fill out your application form. You're either gonna choose standard, active, or enhanced. Um, I'm not sure what the enhanced is. Maybe somebody who just uh, signed up can do that. But when I was there, the active is, is the one that is similar to interactive brokers using DAS, where you have direct access. Um, then you want to choose your trading platform. They have uh, Sterling Trader Pro, which is their platform, or DAS Trader Pro. Now, it is a, a version of DAS Trader, DAS Trader Pro. They call it, um, what? I forget what they, Traders Elite Pro. It might be called when you download it, ETFA. But it is DAS Trader Pro. It's there. Um, I'll get to that question in a sec, Sergio. Uh, then select your commission structure. If you're with Capital Markets Elite Group, I can't recommend enough. Use this code uh, to get the BBT discount. It only applies during market hours, but it will reduce your commissions from their standard $2.95 or $3.90 per trade down to roughly a minimum of $0.50, cents, and then depending on your share size, 0.065. Per share and that's with the SEC fees included and the way you do that email client services it's at this um, email address after your account set up and they'll apply it I highly recommend that you send them a confirmation to make sure that the discount is implied because there's nothing like trading that first day taking six trades and realizing each trade costs you three dollars uh, it, it can be a shocker and then fund your account. If you fund your account, you need to make sure that your bank uh, does international wired transfers. Otherwise, you won't be able to fund your account. So just make sure you have a bank that can do that. Some routing issues that you need to be aware of. Uh, for the discounted route, it is known as LAMP. Um, your limit orders and market orders, if that uh, discount has been applied appropriately by CMAG, all your limited market orders will go automatically through that. But your time and force in any of your hotkeys and your montage need to say day. If it says day plus, it will not execute. As pre-market and post-market, you'll be charged their normal rate of commissions. Any questions over, uh, over brokers real quick? What do you think about operating CFDs? Um, I, I'm not going to give you any recommendation on that, uh, point you back to the disclaimer. However, I will say that I personally would not trade CF, CFDs, but that's a decision that you will have to research for yourself. Um, and, and what I would say is I would go do some some research on what a, a CFD is, Sergio, and, and that should help you um, determine whether that's that's something you want to do or not. Uh, Ryan C., so it's very interesting. The LAMP route is the only one that's discounted, but sometimes in your DAS trader, it may pop up as a different route that's in there. But my experience when I was with them, as long as I executed the trade during the market hours and the LAMP route was up and running, then the discounted rate is what I got. Um, if you receive a message from them telling you that the LAMP route is disabled or finding issues, any trade that you execute will probably be charged at the higher rate. Alrighty, let's move on as we're getting here. So very quickly, the reason I want to touch on the business plan and the trade book review is this is what's going to help you build your confidence when you get beat up or when you get punched in the gut, when you've hit max loss, when you had five days in a row. Um, so Ryan C, when you go into your montage, it's only going to say limit and market in there. That's all it's going to do. When you look at your account, it'll say LAMP somewhere on there is usually what it says. But if you look on your montage, the drop down will be limited market. 
So, um, these are what's going to help you build your confidence, right? Your timeline is going to let you know, hey, I've been punching the gut, but I'm right on track with where I am. SWOT analysis gives you your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, as well as your threats, and how you're going to attack challenges that, that may come your way. And then your trading timeline goals. Um, you may not meet them all the time, but they're there to keep you going. They're there to help pick yourself up and dust yourself off. So you really want to have at least those three aspects of this trader business plan in place. The next thing is your trade book. And Andrew and I and a lot of the moderators talk about this. This is very important to have. The technology and the strategy should be locked down in SIM. Like you should have no, no doubt that your technology is benefiting your strategy and you know how to execute your strategy with your eyes closed. You don't have any hesitation. You don't have any doubts. You, you just execute it and it works. And it produces that positive sloping equity curve. The thing that you're going to have some concerns with is your psychology, right? You want to prepare for this. And that's what I mentioned earlier. You want to identify what your trader personality is. You want to set your SMART goals. You want to identify five things that will improve your trading that you can work on. Because these three things are going to help you over the hurdle of the first few trades that you make when you are trading live, okay? And then, before you make that transition, your trade book edge. You're going to identify your edge in SIM by that positive sloping equity curve, but you're gonna refine it while you're trading live. You're gonna adjust it, you're gonna add things, you're gonna take things, some things are gonna work, some things are gonna have to adjust, but that's the refining process that you wanna do. You don't want to be developing your strategy while live. You want to be refining it, and there's a big difference between those two. Refining it, you have confidence in it. Building it, you're just trying everything because it, the last five trades didn't work, so obviously the strategy didn't work. That's what we're talking about. So here we go. Any questions so far? If you got any, throw them in there. I'll take a pause after I cover this slide to answer any questions that you may have up there. Uh, you can also throw them in the questions tab if you have them, if you want to there. Here's your first few weeks, and, and I'm going to give you a few different scenarios, and I'm going to bring up this awesome stress continuum chart that, that I've found. I think it is very useful. Uh, I found it very useful while I was in the military, and I also think it's very useful in trading to understand how we react to stress. Here's that best case scenario, right? This is the one that we all hope that we achieve. We have that big winner. Uh, within the first day or week or couple weeks, it boosts our account, right, and our confidence. We're like, yes, look at this. I made $1,500 in the first couple weeks. I knew my strategy worked. I knew everything that they taught me. I, I am on top of the world. Your emotions are going to get heightened, right, in this uh, stress continuum. But you're operating in what I what is known as what uh ah, go back go back oh I think I automatically deleted it oh well, here I can I can circle it here for you had one of those things here you go you're operating right here right so you're operating in this peak performance optimal stress level it's where your emotions are heightened. It increases your focus. It increases your performance. This is where you want to be. This is hyper vigilant, hyper focused, executing in, in a good area. You're there. You end the first month. You're green. You, your performance didn't decrease. Um, you're following all your trading rules and you didn't break any, right? Who here would like to have that? I know I would. <laughs> <Of>. <laughs> Right? I think we all would. I think that would be great. I didn't have it the first time I went. 
uh, tried to trade live. I didn't have it the second time or the third time. And, and heck, I mean, let's, let's be honest. I don't think I even have that still today um, where I don't break a rule every now and again or, or my emotions don't get the better of me at some point during the month, right? It, it's just inevitable. It's going to happen. You're going to be affected by what occurs in the market. But maybe your equity curve ends up positive, sloping all the way, right? <laughs> Snow, I'm the rule breaker. Yeah, I may be the rule breaker. Um, but your equity curve sloping up. I mean, it makes you feel good, right? That's the best case scenario. So now in true military fashion, let's go with the worst case scenario. You're going to have that big loser that destroys your account and your confidence right off the bat, right? Your emotions are out of control, meaning you're operating over here in this too much. You're in a panic, you're in anxiety, um, you enter the trade, your heartbeat's going through, you're sweating, your fingers are shaking, you're hitting your hotkey one too many times because you can't stop from shaking, um, you're, you feel exhausted at the end of the day, you're frustrated, you're angry when things don't go the right way, and uh, it can lead to, to negative feelings about yourself, right? and you don't make it through the first month because of all this, without blowing up your account, you blew up whatever you wanted, right? It could be at $800, it could be $900, it could be $10,000, it could be $20,000. It all depends on what you personally consider blowing up your account as, right? You're breaking your rules constantly, you're over trading, under trading, uh, you're not, not abiding by your trade book, you're just, randomly following people and hoping to try to make all that money back, right? And your equity curves in this nice sloping downward or erratic type fashion, right? You're going down, oh, but you made it, oh, yeah, uh, right? Your losing days are much larger than your winning days. Those are the things that we don't like to see that causes our, our equity curve to go down. That's the worst case scenario. Any, anybody experience that? You don't have to say if, if, uh, <laughs> if you don't want. I, I, but I will contend when I first went live back in November of 2018, yeah, my equity curve looked pretty much like this. Um, not, not this amount because I traded very, very small, but yeah, that's what my equity account looked like. <laughs> it was pretty bad. <laughs> but that's what we do. That's how we learn, right? Now I want to get into what is probably the most likely scenario that we have, right? You're going to have some small and some big winners along with some losers. You can expect a decrease in your account, right? Because your account's going to go down. It may go up, but, but you're probably going to have some decrease because one, you're trading small size. So your commissions are going to be a larger portion of your profits than normal. Um, your emotions are going to be uh, heightened. Sometimes they go into this too much stress continuum, but at the same time, there are times that you're going to be able to be in the top game or or over here kind of in this maybe a little bit too little stress. There, there, you might be a little on edge, but for the most part, you're going to fluctuate between that, right? Some days you break your rules, some days you don't. Uh, some days you're ecstatic when you end, your family knows it. And other days your family are like, stay clear, he clearly, he or she clearly had a, um, a bad day, right? Um, you build and lose confidence depending on your results at the end of the day, right? You're confident when you're green, you're not so confident when you're red, you're fluctuating between focusing on the process, focusing on the outcome of the trades, your performance decreases from what it was in simulator. Um, Hesitation is going to be introduced to you most likely from entering. <laughs> oh, I love all those emotion emojis. And that is perfect, right? Your equity curve looks something like this, where there's some days that are down and, and then you bring it back up. And then there's going down and you bring it up and then you're going down, right? It, it's kind of all over the place. That is most likely what's going to occur. Sometimes it could be sloping. 
This little pop here or there may happen every now and again. Uh, Carlos, if you're here, I always laugh because um, I always listen to your onboarding and you always talk about how, how uh, nobody's equity curve does this. I uh, just slowly grinding down, right? Um, yeah, every time you said that, I, I, I was always to myself, yeah, well, that, that's my equity curve. <laughs> what am I doing wrong, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, always, I always said that to myself. But I knew that I was doing, I was on the right track. I just knew that I was trading small sizes and my commissions were having an effect because it during that time it was back, Carlos, if you remember, where commissions we were paying like $4 a trade at CMEG, <laughs> right? So, I mean, trading small size with those commissions, it, it, it was really my, my commissions that were causing my my equity curve would go there, but I was anticipating. I just think it's funny every time. Now you can tell. Now you can add that to the onboard. Everybody's butt mics um, was there, <laughs> right? Um, so don't worry about commissions too when you first go there. But eventually you're going to run into uh, the inevitable losing streak, right? It's going to happen. I don't care who you are you're going to run into it. Um, this is where you're going to have one, two, three, a solid week of red days. It could be 18 uh, losses in a row. Uh, you're going to go into something that you consider a losing streak, right? Uh, it's going to eat away at your confidence. Uh, if you believe, if you don't believe in your strategy, you're going to start to search for a new one. This is where you personally come into effect because the losing streak nine times out of 10 has to do with something that you are doing. Your loss of confidence, the way you're executing your trade is different than what you were doing in sim, but your mind's going to blame it on the strategy. And if you don't have belief in there or the ability to recognize that it's you that's causing the issue, you're going to be like, well, I need to go find a new strategy. And you're going to try a new strategy. And guess what? You may repeat the process, get a positive sloping equity curve, go back to live, and run into a losing streak, and you're going to face it again. And the same thing's going to happen. Your mind's going to tell you it's not you. Boom, you need to go find a new strategy. And that's what's going to happen. So in order to combat, you combat that, you need to have a plan to deal with. You have to have that desire to succeed to get through it, to, to just pick yourself up off the ground, dust yourself off and say, I got this. And sometimes it requires reaching out to other traders to realize that we've gone through it. All of us have. Um, I have, Carlos has, I'm sure Andrew and Peter, we've all gone through leasing streaks as well as other traders in the room. Reach out to people. It's going to help you, right? And this is what that equity curve, right? When you're in there, this just continues to get, get, get in the way, right? Because you wake up and instead of being calm at the beginning of the day, the anxiety is through the roof from taking that trade because you've had four trades or five trades that were all losers. And you're just like, please let this be the one. I just... I need this one so I can believe in myself again, right? Who's ever had that? I, well, I have, right? I didn't just randomly come up with that thought. I've been there, five trades in a row, losing trades in a row. I was, I was just pleading with the market like it cared about me, right? Please just give me a winner so I can feel better about myself. But it's going to happen when you're there. And you just have to have a plan to get get through it, right? This is what that equity curve is going to look like, right? You might you might get there, but then it just goes. And, and the further you go down, it's just kind of a death spiral. And you just got to got to, to look back. And that's why it becomes important to this next part, right? When do you return to live trading or back to the sim? If your equity curve is, is drooping down like this, right? You 
you probably need to take an honest look and go, there's something that is not right with me right now. It's either my strategy or it's myself. But if I have 100% confidence in my strategy because I've proven it by having a positive equity curve, then you know it's yourself. So go back to sim and figure out what it is that's different. It's amazing. If you are trading live, if you go back to a SIM account and say, I'm going to trade this just like I would a live trade, except when I press the enter key, all I'm going to focus on is what's going on in my head at the moment I press that key. And compare that to what's going on in your head when you're in a live account. And that's the gap that you got to eliminate that's gonna help you get through that transition to live trading or increasing risk for that matter, right? So here's some, some considerations for returning to simulator. Uh, yeah, we'll be done right about six o'clock, maybe a little bit past, but should be right on, on point with it. The number one thing, Take a look at your equity curve. If what you were doing is working and it's sloping upward, there's no need to go back to the simulator. What you were doing is working. If, however, if, however, your equity curve is sloping down and you can't get it to kind of come to a break even standpoint or kind of leveling out sideways, you may want to go back to the simulator and say, okay, what emotions are affecting me in live account that isn't affecting me when I execute my plan in SIM? Because if you go back to that simulator and you trade it, you can trade it for 5, 10, 15 trades, and all of a sudden your equity curve's going back up, you instantaneously have the confidence back in yourself. Say, you know what? My strategy works. It's not that, it's me. What is it about me that's causing it, right? The other thing is, is the piranhas, as Zen attributes to, right? That decrease of 6% in your account, it may not occur in one big shark bite of a, of a loss, but it can be a whole bunch of little bites that are just eating at you and eating and eating and eating and eating and eating. Um, the, that's the time to get back there. Stay in SIM for the rest of the month once you hit that 6% in your account. Restart it up the next month and, and go back to live, recalibrate and, and reset yourself. If you're in a losing streak, that's another good time to just say, you know what, I need to do a hard reset. Let me go back to SIM, trade, trade a strategy set of 20 trades and see if I can produce positive results. And if I can produce positive results, I'll go back to live and rebuild that confidence, right? Another thing is, look at if you're cutting your winners short. That might be a, a lack of confidence um, in yourself. This is very important, I think, when you're increasing your size as well. Um, I've found for myself when I increase size, I tend to start to cut my winners a little bit shorter than what I was doing when I was fully confident. So it's just something to be aware of um, as, as you move forward. If you start cutting them short, really consider why are you, are you, are you in a spot where you're fearing that you're wrong or you're losing the trade or you don't wanna lose your money, right? And then the opposite's also true. Are you holding your losers too long? Violating your stop. If you're violating your stop, every day or consistently throughout the month, um, you got to go back. That is, violating your stops, the number one cause that's going to cause you to blow up your account. It just is, right? Um, because you're going to add into it, you're going to hope, you're going to wish that the stock's going to come back. You're going to justify it, be like, oh, it's Apple. It's got to go back to 140. <laughs> right? As it just continues to consolidate around 119. And you have all that capital up. Or you're in Tesla and you're like, Tesla's got to go back to 1,000. It just has to as it's trading at 600. <laughs> right? So, 
So don't be, don't do that. Violating your stop is, is terrible. The other thing uh, that can indicate that you might need to return to the simulator is trading outside of your trade book edge, right? You're, you're chasing trades, uh, you've lost confidence in your trade book, so you're trying somebody else's. You hear Brian, Andrew, Peter, myself, Carlos, John, somebody call out a stock and you quickly pull it up and you're like, yeah, that's good, and you take it and, and you're in and without doing a thorough analysis or ensuring that it's within in your trade book. Those are all the things. So I want to finish up with this, this um, slide right here. And then we'll, I'll go into questions. Really think about this. And I highlighted some words in these two, right? Live trading is not going to build your confidence in a strategy. That is done in simulator. Think about that for a second. Because too often times I hear traders, hey, I need to trade live so I can be exposed to the emotions, so I can build my confidence, and so my strategy will work. It, it, it's, you can do that. Um, I'm just here to tell you, it's probably gonna cost you a lot of money to do it that way. Instead, live trading builds confidence in yourself to execute your strategy properly. And I think these are two very vital sentences, right? The live trading builds confidence in your ability to execute what you know works. That's your strategy. But you know that your strategy works because you built it and tested it in sim to produce, right, these positive sloping equity curves. This is confidence in your strategy in sim. This is live trading. Oops. This is live trading building confidence in yourself to execute your strategy. That is what, what it's about. And when you understand or have the belief in yourself to execute a written down plan, your ability to follow your rules and to execute your trades and to be satisfied with a trade, whether it makes you money or loses you money, is gonna be astronomical. You, you're just gonna be content and you're gonna enjoy trading and you're not gonna fear that anxiety as much. It's still gonna encounter you. You're still gonna have it every now and then, but you're gonna enjoy trading uh, so much more. So the last thing I'll show you is this equity curve right here. If your equity curve looks like this, I would highly, highly, highly consider recommend or not me consider but recommend you consider going back to sim and figuring out why your equity curve is doing this why blow why why give the market any more money if if your strategy isn't working and you're not able to execute it first find out what you do so to finish this out i got one last poll for you because i found this poll button and i like it I may start taking it over from Peter. So nobody will see this. Um, this is just uh, just so everybody can kind of get a, a sense. Uh, polls are good. I like them. What is the slope of your equity curve? Is it upward, sideways, downward? Or I have no idea what's going on. It'll be interesting to see if we can compare this, right? Um, <laughs> give it a few more seconds. If we can compare this with trading live accounts, trading simulator and all that. All righty, and posting. So we got about 20% with an upward slope. 
31% sideways, uh, downwards 34, and 15%, I have no idea. I knew I should throw that in because, I mean, sometimes people have no idea. <laughs> Mina, you can short your equity curve. That is, that is an excellent, excellent choice, right? <laughs> to, uh, that, that could be a good one. Um, for those of you that are a sideways slope, this is what I, I think, or my opinion of what a sideways equity curve means. Uh, to me, I believe you have the risk management in place that is allowing you to survive. Um, your strategy works, uh, possibly, but you're still battling those emotions, but you at least have your risk management it's set to where it's helping you out. The downward slope uh, strategy is most likely out of control or your risk management's out of control or your emotions are out of control. You really gotta just I, I, go back to Sim and try to narrow it down to figure out which one it is. And then the upward slope, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Increase your size when, when you feel. So with that, that concludes the presentation. I'll uh, absolutely take questions here. Uh, for anybody that's got them, I'll stay here as long as you want uh, for that. Uh, so let me scroll up. I saw one, Sandy. I believe you had the first one. I noticed that in Sim, I will get in a trade quicker and stay in longer for the reward, but in live, I hesitate to get in quick enough and I get out quicker. Um, absolutely, Sandy. Uh, that That's your emotions taking, right? Why are you entering later? Because you want the extra confirmation. Your, your mind's telling you, hey, this trade's not setting up and you're, you're double checking everything and you're double double making sure that everything's in place and correct and then you enter, which causes a little bit late entry. And then when you're in the trade, you got those emotions going and you're like, oh, oh, I got money, it's in my direction, let me take the profits, right? And move my trade to break even and that happens. The longer you trade, the more comfortable that you're gonna get, the more confidence you build in your strategy and your trade management the easier it's going to be to hold out for the longer moves that go. So that's absolutely um, uh, normal. Absolutely, Steve, thank you. Just making sure there. So hit up the questions tab real quick. Uh, Goose, so you exit early on your trades, missing out on the larger profits. How do I overcome this? Uh, this may be uh, quite interesting. You might might find my response to that or to this uh, interesting. Um, quit worrying about it. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> um, focus in. Focus in on the profits that you made and did you execute the plan that you wanted to going into the trade? That's how you're gonna overcome it. Because the more confidence you get into your trade management plan of where you want a partial or what you wanna see when you take a partial or when you, when you have determined where you want to get out, all that should be done before the market ever opens. You should know where you want to get out of a trade before you get into the trade. And what do I mean by that? For me, I take my parcels at three areas. Point three R because I like, I, I just, it's a psychology thing and I gotta have it at point three R. It just helps me, makes me feel good, makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside I, I, and I just like it. Um, it has zero to do with profit um, other than uh, making me feel good. I then take one out at 0.5 and then I take one out at 1R. I take it those two because my stats and the way I trade and the strategy I trade tells me that's where I can maximize it. Are there days where that, that trade will go above 1R and will run all day long? Absolutely. Um, 
but over the course of my trading, I can make more money taking all out at one hour versus hoping that it will go there. Eventually, I look to maybe extend that a little more once uh, I get to a level that I want. But in the meantime, I want to focus on what I'm doing well to improve my confidence so that I can then extend myself outward and extend myself into that uncomfortable zone again, which will then help me get the larger profits and hold on to trades longer. Don't beat yourself up over, over missing a trade because I'm telling you 99.99% of the time you could have made more money on a trade. I don't think, I don't think anybody can top tick a trade every single time. Every now and again, you may get it right at that level, uh, but not always. So that's, that's my opinion on it. Other moderators may have a different opinion. Focus on what you did make and then eventually extend that out. Um, is it possible for a SIM account to connect to TraderView? Yes, absolutely, Vic. All you have to do is import your trades at the end of the day into there and it, it will record them, in, record them how you import them. About the 25,000 PDG rule, what happens if your account is exactly 25K? You do five trades and end the day minus $10. So now your account is less than 25,000. How do we deal with PDT in such a situation? I guess the core question is generally a safer idea to fund. So PJ, the best way I can answer that is at the beginning of the trading day, you have to be at $25,000. If your account is below $25,000 at the end of the trading day, i.e. the beginning of the next trading day, which uh, is 12 Eastern, so 9, 9 p.m. Pacific, if your account is not at 25,000, you fall under the PDT rule, which means you can only do it. If you take those trades at 25,000 in the day, you end up below 25,000. Those five trades you took that day, you're fine. It's the follow on trades the next day that will be considered under the PDT rule. What I recommend, this is me, um, if, if you want to put the least amount of capital and still be over the $25,000 in IB, deposit 25,000. Trade in a strategy set, whether that's 20 trades, 30 trades, 40 trades, whatever number you want. Determine what your max amount of loss per trade is. So let's make this very simple. Say your max loss is $10. You want to take uh, 20 trades with a max loss of $10 per trade. Take $200 and deposit it in. And now you have $25,200. If all 20 trades lose, you're back to 25,000 and you can re-upload another $200 for the next set of 20 trades you wanna to go to. Or if you don't wanna do it that way because you, you have all the money and you're fine with it, I would, I would go at least 30,000. But if you're just transitioning to live the $25,000 plus whatever you risk for the number of trades you want is gonna get you enough buying power. So I hope that makes sense. Oh, no, Zan, you got that. Thank you. Uh, how, uh, how much commission do I usually spend trading on a daily basis? Since I have uh, migrated to the large stocks, I typically in a day will spend about seven to eight dollars of commissions. And that's a large. For today, I spent a whopping dollar twenty <laughs> on commissions. I think no, I spent more than that. I haven't even looked. I'm probably at like five dollars today, maybe two dollars. No, sorry, more like two dollars because I only took one trade, three transactions. I was so inundated with other stuff going on, with the emergency red uh, compression pants for soccer. That, that took over my entire morning. Um, daughter comes calling, you gotta, dad, dad's gotta fix the problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but anywhere, 
I think for your commissions, if you can stay around 10 to 20 percent uh, of your profit is, is about right for your commissions, if you can do that. Uh, John, oh, all right. Is there, uh, if there's no other questions, that concludes tonight's webinar. Uh, thank you everybody for attending, um, especially for all of you that were in uh, SIM. Hopefully this was helpful, give you a metric or some things to consider about uh, making that transition of when you're ready to do it. So thank you, everybody. Look forward to seeing you here tomorrow. Don't forget, tomorrow morning with Jared and Engineering the Market at 8 a.m. Eastern, followed right away by Carlos and Norman, the pre-market show, by Brian and Andrew for live trading. And Wednesday is John, and then Thor, Eamon, Peter, myself, and Brian to close the day out. And then I will be back with you tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. Eastern for a psychology webinar on identifying yourself as a trader where we're gonna focus heavily on how you value money or value different things in life. So, thank you everybody.